Schön viel noch. Good morning, church. Good morning. Happy Ascension Sunday. Actually, Ascension Day was on Thursday, but we are celebrating the Ascended Jesus today in our service on Ascension Sunday. Let me tell you some of the things that are happening here in the life of the church. Thrive is this coming Thursday um, on the 20th, um, and also uh, the youth group will start up again tonight. We didn't meet last week because of Mother's Day but we will meet tonight. Um, next week is Pentecost Sunday. If you can, um, you don't have to go out and buy anything, but uh, wear red next Sunday um, and so that we can celebrate the Holy Spirit together. The other thing to let you know is the altar flowers today are in honor of Wally and Jenny Lenhart, um, who is celebrating their 78th wedding anniversary. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty big stuff. Um, so the other thing to let you know is that, you know, as you can see, the, the tapes are down, the, the pews uh, have their Bibles and, and the hymnals in it. Uh, we, t we have taken down the table out front. Um, and uh, one thing to let you know is that uh, some people might be saying, when is our services going to go back to the times that they were? We are exploring that right now, and we are going to be exploring what that might look like for us in the fall. Um, and so um, please be patient. Again, if you know of anybody who is a worship band leader or a worship leader, let me know because I would love to hear, um, even if you have a small connection to that person. So any other announcements to lift up? Well, let's begin our worship then in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you're able to stand as we share together the call to worship. Join with me. Come and worship God. Keep a, celebrate with songs, songs of, praise. of praise. For our, For our God, God, the Most, Most High, High, is seated, seated on His, on his holy, holy Throne, throne sovereign, sovereign over all, all the earth. earth. Let's, Let's worship, worship God, God together. together. And again we say, For our God, God the Most, Most High, High, is seated, seated on, on His Holy Throne, throne sovereign, sovereign over all the earth. earth. Let's, Let's worship, worship God, God together. together. Let's join together with what a friend we have in Jesus. <clears throat> what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. 
Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge, take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. You may be seated. And if I want to, if, if the kids want to come forward today, um, I have a little experiment to do with you. If you want to come on up, um, we'll look and see what we're going to do today. I need a volunteer that will take this kind of like, when we opened it up, it would kind of like splurt it all over the place. And I don't think it'll do it again. Oh, there you go. Would you mind filling this up with, with the Sprite? We have some Sprite here, and we're going to fill up the, the jar. And then, would somebody want to, you can do this, Isaiah, if you want, uh, just to take a handful of raisins, and we're going to throw them in the, have you guys ever seen this done before? No? Um, we're going to see what happens to these raisins when we put them in the Sprite. So just put a handful of raisins in and see. And let's wait and see if they're going to do anything. Oh, please, raisins, do something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it goes one. And then it goes back down. Did you see it? And if we... You know what, one of the things I used to do, we used to do when we were in college, is we would take a, a glass and put raisins on the bottom and put Sprite in it, and people would be sitting at their table, and they'd see this glass in the middle of their table, and the raisins were going up and down, and they'd be like, what's going on in there? So you know what, it, this, you know what this reminds me of? Today is Ascension Sunday, and you know what, Jesus, he ascended up into heaven, um, and just like these raisins, raisins are going up and down, They're, that's pretty amazing. Look at them. They're really starting to move now. Um, but uh, it's pretty amazing that Jesus ascended. We're going to talk a little bit about what that, that means for us. Um, he had to ascend so the Holy Spirit could come down on us so we could do amazing things. So this is pretty amazing with these raisins, and we're going to keep them going all through the service. You can watch them a little bit, um, and you can just remember... Remember the fact that Jesus ascended so that God could do some amazing things. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for, for Jesus. We thank you for who he is. We thank you that he ascended so that the Spirit could come down. We just pray this, that we would go forth with that truth, that we would live into that joy, and we pray this in your name. Amen. Thanks, guys. And we'll keep watching the raisins. Is there any prayer concerns this morning? And Sharon. Gary has a couple of steps. Uh, one on the 20th, one on the 28th prior to the service. Here on June 9th. We, we were praying for him this morning at the early service. June 9th, <laughs> um, we're going to have, um, we're going to be praying for Gary as he goes forth with surgery, but there's some tests before that too. So pray for Gary Knorr. Any other things? Well, let's, um, let's go to Lord in prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this time that we can gather. We thank you for a different time. Lord, we, we just want to pray that you would um, fill us today. That we would 
not be distracted by the world, not be distracted by the things that are going on, but that we would be focused on you. And Lord, we, we pray that uh, you would forgive us for the times that we are distracted. And we thank you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the cross. And Lord, there's some things that we want to lift up to you today. We want to pray for, for Gary as he prepares for surgery. We pray for um, Howard and, and for Dan Mallory, Howard Roxbury and Dan Mallory as they are recovering. Lord, and we just, um, just lift them up to you. Lord, we also want to be praying for our church and our direction, the direction that we are going and pray that you would bless it. Lord, we also <clears throat> just want to lift up ourselves. Do a work within us, Lord. Bring joy unto us. We just pray this in your name. And we thank you for the way that you taught us how to pray and we pray that prayer this morning saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's join together with our prayer hymn this morning. If you're able to, stand and we'll sing thy word as a lamp. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, think I've lost my way, still you're there right beside me. And nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now I will not forget your love for me and yet my heart forever is wandering. Jesus, be my guide and hold me to your side and I will love you to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You may be seated. As we take some time this morning to, to thank God for what he's given us and for how he continues to move the church forward, let us take some time to, to meditate just to remind you that the offering plates are by the exits. Um, and if you feel called to give. So let's take some time to, to worship God and to remember the thanksgiving of the, of the blessing that he gives to us.
This offering that we receive today, we ask a blessing over it to be used to further your kingdom. We pray a blessing over us as well as we live out our lives. We pray that we would be living to the glory of God, that we would be showing our community joy, and that we would be living the example of Christ. Lord, we also ask as we hear this word today, your scripture, that uh, it would profoundly move us. And, and that we would be ta- able to take it and apply it to our lives. And we pray this in your most blessed name. Amen. You may be seated. The scripture passage that we're looking at today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. Hear the word of God. Jesus said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. And then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And when he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Jesus' 
very last act on earth is also one of his most puzzling. He ascends into heaven to be seated at the right hand of the Father. On the surface, the ascension appears to show Christ leaving our world. But if we see the ascension resulting in less of Jesus' presence instead of more, then we are missing out on a powerful truth about the ascended Jesus. When Jesus encounters Mary Magdalene after his resurrection, she throws her arms around him. She had lost him once, and she would never lose him again. But Jesus says to her, Don't hold on to me, Mary, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. One could assume that Jesus is saying this because his resurrected body is sacred, but later Jesus invites Thomas to touch his wounds, so that can't be the case. Jesus knew the fear that Mary felt, thinking she had lost him forever. So through his reply, Jesus is saying, if you let go, if you let me ascend, you'll have access to an even stronger relationship with me. Mary, the way I am right now, there's a chance you could lose me. But if I ascend to the Father, you will have me forever and nothing will ever be able to take me away from you. His presence would come through the Holy Spirit, who was not merely a force, but a person who would come in his place. Jesus said, unless I go away, the advocate will not come. But if I go, I will send him to you. And one of the roles of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Christ to us. This is why Jesus said that through the Holy Spirit, he would finally show himself to his disciples. The implication is that the disciples did not and could not truly know Jesus until he went away bodily and returned through the Holy Spirit, which is encouraging for us to see because you might be under the impression that if only you could have lived and walked with Jesus, that you would know him better than you do now. But you'd be wrong. Before Jesus died, the Holy Spirit had not been released into the world in this powerful way. And you can only know Jesus fully through the Spirit's influence as he shows you in the shadow of the cross how high and long and wide and deep his love is for us. In other words, through the Holy Spirit, you can see Christ and know his presence and his love better than the apostles on the night of the Lord's Supper. So the inevitable question is, are you living like this is true? Are you living like Christ is more accessible now than he was when he walked the earth? Jesus has made his intentions clear. He left heaven and all of his glory for your sake. And through his ascension, he has made himself infinitely available to you. Christ has drawn near to you. So draw near to him. Wow. Wow, you know, the, the more that I read of the love of God, the more that I study the original language that it was written in, the more that I open myself up to God in prayer and, and meditation, the more that I experience the, the love of my brother and brothers and sisters in Christ, you all, the more that I experience the incredible, far out, <laughs> groovy love of God. Like a Christian artist once said, you know, like he's, he's more than amazing, more than spectacular could ever be. He's more than marvelous. He's more than wonderful. That's what Jesus is to me. You know, maybe you've seen the show back in, in the day, Star Trek, um, where um, they said, beam me up, Scotty. Those of us who have watched Star Trek know this. It is from the series of, of television shows and movies with Captain Kirk and Spock. Um, they travel through space um, with their crew, and it is the final frontier. It is not Star Wars. Uh, Tiffany Price gets them a little bit mixed up. She sent out memes on Star Wars Day with Star Trek characters. 
and Ed and I are praying for you, Tiffany. So, <laughs> but anyway, it is not Star Trek, Star Wars. It's Star Trek. Um, it's a different thing. Now, I haven't really watched a whole lot of Star Trek. I have to admit, I'm not a Trekkie. My brother is, um, but I've seen enough to know that they would take their phasers out and they'd say, "Beam me up, Scotty," and and they phased out and they appeared in a different place. Today, we see Jesus doing kind of the same thing, yet it's not uh, special effects, it's not a television show, it's not even CGI. It is the real deal. Hard for us to grasp, hard for us to imagine, because we have not seen something like that. I know last summer, and I've talked with with you a, a lot about this, last summer I watched my mom take her very last breaths. I, I watched um, her body, and it went gray almost immediately, and we knew she was gone. And you know what? That gave me hope. That gave me assurance that she was no longer there, and she was someplace else. But it does not say that in Scripture. It's, my mom was no longer there. But it does not say that in Scripture. It does not say that Jesus left his body behind. It said that he ascended. His resurrected body ascended. Wow. Now, I don't, I don't know about you, but when I, I read this passage of script, Scripture, I get a little bit envious. Because did you see what it said there? It said, then Jesus opened their minds so that they could understand Scripture. I don't know about you, but I would love Jesus to stand in front and open the scriptures up for me so I could understand it. And, and you know what? When I feel this way, I hear the voice in the back of my head. Jeff, you can do that. You have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can do that as well. So, so we can understand. We just need to ask. We need to pray that God will open up the scriptures for us. And God will do that, just like the video said. Amazing love. This is amazing love, folks. Can you say it with me this morning? Amazing love. You know, I have heard it over and over, you have too, that we are living in such a different time. Uh, it is a, a difficult time. It, it, is a, it has been a pandemic. Um, and it really has done, a, a, if you look around, it really has done a lot of work on us here at the church and in our society. But look at the scripture, folks. Jesus ascended. Or the word that is usually actually used there is he was taken up. He was lifted up. He's gone to prepare a place for us. And he promises the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we will celebrate and look at that next week. Remember, if you are able to, wear red. Some of you guys are already this morning for it. <clears throat> wear it to celebrate this amazing gift of the Scripture. But if you wear green, black, or brown, or blue, we'll still welcome you. But think about it. We as well, now, after the ascending Jesus, we live in a different time. A time that we can be filled. A time that we can be gifted. We can see, we can experience this amazing Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come and fill us. Come and fill this place. You know, Jesus had to leave so that we could be filled with His Spirit. And, and at Pentecost, there were divided tongues of fire that came down upon them. And I'm not going to say much more because you'll have to come back next week and hear that. But this passage of Scripture today tells us about something that happened so that the story could continue. To live through us. Have we let things become in our way of, of receiving joy? Have we let things get in the way? And did you see what happened after Jesus ascended? Something pretty cool. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great, what? 
joy. Because a different era had arrived, they were filled with joy. They would now prepare for the helper and, and know that like Jesus, the Spirit would be with them. They had joy. So the thing that we need to, to look at this morning is, is what is this joy? This is the original language um, that it was found in. These are uh, Greek letters up here. And how you say it is kara, kara. And it means not just an emotion, it's a quality, folks. It is a quality um, grounded upon God himself and indeed derived from God. We can find it in Psalms. We can find it in the book of Philippians and Romans. It's a joy which characterizes the Christian life here on earth and also anticipates the joy of being with Christ forever in his kingdom with his return. So if you were with us last week, we looked at John chapter 15 in the Gospel of John. And it said that Jesus is the vine and, and we are the branches. We draw our strength from Jesus. And when we do that, it says we will bear fruit. And what is one of the fruits of the Spirit that we're talking about? Joy. You know... Um, I don't know if you remember this, but I remember this. Uh, uh, I don't know how long it's been not being printed, but you might have seen it in the checkout lines at the grocery store. It was a newspaper, and it was called the Weekly World News. Does anybody remember that? Um, it, was, it had these really far-fetched stories in it, and it chronicled a lot of times the life of a, a character named Bat Boy, um, who was half human and half bat. And, and there were stories of Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster in it. Uh, anybody remember this, seeing it at the grocery store? Yeah. Um, if you would go online, actually, they have a website where they're still continuing stories. In fact, one of the stories that I saw online yesterday when I was there was that Hollywood will soon stream movies right to your brain. But I remember being in the checkout line one time, and the headline said that Jesus will return on a UFO. Of course, I laughed. But in the years since, I have thought about that, that headline. And it speaks frightening truth to me. We are becoming a culture, a world that is becoming less and less connected to the truth of Jesus. Our politics have become bigger. Our media has become bigger. Our phones have become smaller, but they do bigger things and they consume us. Are we, is our world, our children, our great, great, great grandchildren, or we even ourselves going to know Jesus when he returns? You know, we have no idea when Jesus is going to be Back. It says in Scripture that he will return the same way that he left and that he will come like a thief in the night. The weatherman is not going to say tomorrow's weather will have a chance of Jesus in it. Are we going to know? Are we going to know? And as we are waiting, are we going to miss out on this joy, folks? Are we going to? Um, are we going to miss out because we have become too distracted um, you know, I feel like we are. You know, church, our lives should be a time of joy. What if we worshiped in such a way that we jumped out of bed on Sunday and we just couldn't wait to get here? What if? Or, or that we had a time in each day where we open ourselves up to Christ. Or we took Jesus into every part of our life, that every part would have some joy in it. I think we have become a culture, a people who have missed the ascended Jesus. I believe that we have. And you know what? It comes down to this. It comes down to a question, I believe. The question is, 
how is it with your soul? It is not a question of, are you going to church? However, going to church is going to help you be more connected to the vine, to Jesus. It is not a question of, are you reading the Scriptures? However, the Scriptures are going to, to help us with our relationship with God. It's going to help us find joy. It is not a question of, are you praying enough? Although prayer moves us forward in our relationship. It is about who are we in Jesus. Our connection should be that we are part of the living vine. And that living vine is a part of who we are as well. Have you, has the church become a dead branch? Something to think about. And if you see it, this deadness, it's time to do something about it. It's just not the pastor's job. For you know what? We can be, we can be resurrected too. It's not too late. Resurrected into to new life. You know, this altar is always open if you need some time to pray. You can pray at it this morning. You can pray during the time of hymn. It's always open. You, can, you may want to pray for yourself or the church. Let's get connected, folks. You know, the more I read the Word of God, the more I study the original language of the Bible, the more I open myself to prayer and meditation, the more I experience the, the love of my brother and sister in Christ, the more I experience this far out, incredible, groovy love of God. You know, I hope you do too. Let's be branches. Let us know the ascended Christ. Let's pray. Lord, you are moving. You are moving like a river. Help us to, to jump out of the shallow and into the deepness and into the river that will take us to the place of joy, to the, the place of peace, the place of love, the place of hope. Help us to know the ascended Christ. Help us to receive your spirit. And we just pray this in your name. Amen. So let's join together with our closing hymn this morning, Precious Name. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will help and comfort give you. Take it then where'er you go. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven, precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven, take the name of Jesus ever as a shield of every snare. If temptations round you gather, breathe that holy name in prayer. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Oh, the precious name of Jesus, how it thrills our souls with joy. When his loving arms receive us and 
His songs our tongues employ. Precious name, O oh, how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, O oh, how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven. At the name of Jesus, bowing, falling prostrate at his feet, King of kings in heaven, crown him when our journey is complete. Precious name, oh, how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of hell. Precious name, oh how sweet, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of hell. So are you experiencing the joy? Are you kind of like these ra dead raisins in the bottom of this, this, this uh, sprite that are not moving? Um, let us be filled with the Spirit. Let us recognize the ascended Jesus. And let us experience the hope. And let us know the grace of Christ, the love of the Father, and the work of the Holy Spirit. Let's go forth in peace. Amen. <laughs>